hey, hey, legend. Welcome to the Name Spare Podcast. If you are new here for the first time, Hey, first up, thanks for listening, giving this sucker a try. Um, this is the Noob Spear Podcast. It's where I interview spearfishing experts, authorities, and characters from around the world. Tease out their tips, tricks, actionable information, and of course, just good old frothing stories. Today, it's a little bit different. It's my friend and mentor. It's Adam Sellers. It's the bloke that taught me to be a paddy freediving instructor and just... Um, He's awesome. He's a legend. He's a massive story behind his brand. It's called The Pressure Project. And it's not just a brand. It's got a story. It's got a real story. It's attached to his own inner struggles and stuff. And he's very candid and honest about that. And uh, I consider him a personal friend and mentor. He is helping me grow. And um, and you might hear some of that sort of conversation today in this interview. It's a little bit different. Um, I hope you really enjoy it. If you are teaching other people how to spearfish, then you will definitely get some nuggets out of this. If you are interested in, you know, learning how we all overcome some of those early obstacles in our spearfishing, then this is a great episode for you to sink your teeth into. Adam Sellers, The Pressure Project, we're going to get there in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I know I'm killing that tail, that, that, uh, that saying these days, but please excuse me. Uh, Tommy, up in, oh sorry, down in Coffs Harbour from me, um, is helping to host the Australian Blue Water Freedivers Classic. This is an incredibly iconic competition. It is a fantastic, fantastic event. I can't stress it enough. I've been trying to get down there for several years. This year, Albie invited me. I had a spot in his house and on his boat. It was going to happen, but my wife's 30 weeks pregnant this week, and we've we've been running courses, and things are just crazy. Um, So I've had to just sort of... tone it down a wee bit. So I'm going to miss out again this year. But if you are not like me and you have some free time, I would really encourage you to go. It's the Australian Blue Water Freedivers Classic. It's held in Woolgooga, New South Wales, just north of Coffs Harbour this year. The comp dates are the 18th and 19th of March. So like literally two weeks after this episode goes out, um, they have a sick briefing on the Friday evening of the 17th. It's a froth-filled, fun-filled adventure meeting legend sparrows and uh, hopefully shooting some cool fish. It's a special place too. The underwater environment down there is just uh, like nothing else. It's super cool. Um, in other news, the 99 Spare Recipes continues to sell pretty well. It's, it's getting some traction. It's getting into some retailers. Massive thanks to legends in the community that are just helping to introduce their local spearfishing stores to this book. They just take a copy in and show them and... Um, People like uh, Neptune Spear and Dive, Caitlin and her husband up there run that in Mackay. Um, absolutely legends. As soon as they look at the book and they get the concept, they feel it in their hands, they have a look at the quality of it, they're like, sign me up, I want, you know, however many copies, you know. So Caitlin's going to get a couple of book, uh, boxes of books this week and Neptune Spear and Dive and Mackay will be, will be having that on their shelf. Um, also new acquisitions, uh, Jared. Helped me make connections with Type of Tackle in North of New Zealand. If you're in New Zealand, Type of Tackle is actually the only spearfishing retailer at the moment that is hosting it. Massive thanks to Andrew, uh, moderator for the NZ Spirit community. Um, he helped to reach out to some of the retailers in New Zealand, try and get some traction with the book. I really appreciate it. Kelly introduced the book to Caitlin at the Neptune Spear and Dive in Mackay. Uh, Craig McNiven took the book into the Gold Coast, uh, his local Gold Coast BCF, and uh, showed the store manager there the book. Things like this, like they, that, that's amazing. Like honestly, like sometimes I'm just super grateful to have such an awesome community and I, I really appreciate the response I had to some of my frustrations with um, getting the book into some stores. So really, thanks guys for for doing everything you do. If you are looking for the book in store, go and support your local spearfishing retailer. Spearfishing Superstore uh, have got that Spear West, Boss Outdoor, Marimbula, Fergo's Tackle World in Wollongong, Batavia Coast Dive and Water Sports, uh, Adreno Aspley in Brisbane North, Adreno Wollongabba in Brisbane South, Adreno Gold Coast, Adreno Melbourne, Adreno Sydney, Adreno Perth. These legends have all got the books on their shelves and they're stocking it for frothers. It's probably the best gift you could give to a, new, a noob because uh, it's going to teach them to care for their catch as well as give them access to a whole bunch of awesome recipes that are going to share our passion. And, you know, you know as well as I do, if you've been spearing a while, what a pleasure it is to prepare a meal made out of seafood that we cooked ourselves. Anyway, I'm rambling as usual. I really want to get into this interview. It's awesome. Mental health, 
um, learning to be a freediving instructor for, for me and then also overcoming some of those common challenges. Lots of encouragement here from my good friend, uh, Adam Sellers. Let's go. Let's get into it. Neptonics.com source the very best in spearing gear from around the planet. Jerry says, if we sell it, we believe in it, we trust it and dive it. Neptonics is the one-stop shop for all your spearfishing essentials. Neptonics is solid gear that works, and you'll know it's true when you pull the trigger on a Neptonics mech. On every snap of a Neptonics power band and in every whiz of a Neptonics spear gun reel, singing with the power of another big fish. Buy gear you can depend on at neptonics.com. Use the code NOOB10 to save 10%. Adreno.com.au, the home of recipes, blogs, videos, equipment reviews, and an obnoxiously large range of spearfishing equipment for frothers like you. Not only that, but spearfishing trips and courses, courses and trips that I sometimes get to go on. Check them out at adreno.com.au. It's a Spiro's best friend. Check them out, and if you want to buy gear, pump in the code NOOBSPIRO to save $20 on every purchase over $200. You can use that online, in-store. Use the code NOOBSPIRO, save some cash, and support the NOOBSPIRO podcast. Shop with adreno.com.au. Guys, check out howtofreedive.com. If you're just starting spearfishing, then check out the 10-meter freediver. You can get started for free with this online course. It will teach you the fundamentals, the basics to get you down and spearfishing to 10 meters. That's 30 feet. And uh, it's a respectable depth when you're getting started, and it can seem a little intimidating. So Pete helps iron out some of those learning curves, makes it a lot smoother for you. It's a cheap and affordable course, really good high-quality video teaching. And you can uh, get started for free. Do do a few samples, check it out, see if you like it. If you do, uh, pump in the code NoobSpiro and you'll save 20% on that course cost. So head over to howtofreedive.com, check out the 10 metre freediver if you're just starting out spearfishing. Give us a testies, testies, one, two, three. Testies, testies, one, two, three. Three. Wow, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> G'day, guys. Welcome back to the New Story Podcast. Apparently, I'm with Adam Sellers from the Pressure Project. He has three testies. <laughs> three's better than one, eh? <laughs> well, it must be. You've got two beautiful children, so those three things have been working their heart out. <laughs> Jeez, good start. Yes. Yeah. Um, Adam, mate, it's it's about time we caught up. Like uh, you and I, you you. first of all, I think I went and did a Killsby retreat with you and Eckhart. Um, I did, what did I do the first time? As in like, what did you do or what did I do? <laughs> What do we do? Did I go through and do masters straight up? You did. No, th- I did it in the, the middle course. Advanced, Advanced. and master at the same one because we've got enough dive sessions. So and we had mm. all these deep sinkholes we could run around and throw you in mm, and mm. all the water jumped out when you jumped in. Well, I ended up doing a full <laughs> week course with you and then did my instructors as well. So was yes, that the masters? that's right. It? That's right. Yes. Instructors on the sunny coast, uh, advanced master uh, at the sinkholes. mm, mm. Mm. Mate, those sinkholes are beautiful. And uh, that weekend down there in the Killsby sinkhole, like it's something else. You've got a special venue down there. Yeah, we're super lucky. I mean, people from Australia fly to Mexico for cenotes. Yeah. And then when you say to them, hey, we've we got Australian cenotes, they're like, where? We're like in South Australia in the outback. Yeah. No one knows about it. I didn't know about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, we're actually super lucky. The water's crystal clear. Like it's not as cold as people probably think in summertime and um it's something else like the way the light comes through there the clarity of the water the the platform they have set up it's just a perfect place to get down and start uh well i i say get rid of some inflammation and stress from your body because i swear that's what happened to me i went down a full clothing size in one weekend <laughs> yeah well free diving does that yeah uh, and in spearing the same thing the, the compression on the human body and the blood movement within Mm. Um, it does that, mm. and um, you know, so it's great for weight loss. But yeah, those those. I think the thing with the sinkholes is it's perfect for practicing skills. Mm. Like the ocean, especially in Australia, can be quite angry. Mm. So you're trying to get people to practice these skills, but water's going in their bloody snorkel. They're getting bitten by blue bottles. Yeah, you know, they're getting basically hammered. Yeah, and you're like, try and relax. <laughs> they're like, I'm breathing in bloody salt water. How do I relax? Whereas those sinkholes are basically just deep swimming pools. Yeah. So you can reload and then you can go like, hey, let's let's work on this duck dive in a swimming pool environment that's yeah. deep. So so good to learn techniques in isolation. Like, like as you say, like with spearing, it's you jump in, you know, you've got a mask that doesn't fit properly, you know, you've got a brand new wetsuit on, 
you're dealing with a meter and a half swell and 15 knot winds. You're trying to shoot fish. You're uncomfortable. And then you're out with a bunch of experienced guys in deeper water than you should probably be in. And that's kind of the learning environment. Like it's, um, it's, it's a higher stress. Whereas like when you do a freediving course in a controlled environment, all of a sudden everything just feels easier. You know, like a 20 meter dive on a line in a, in a um, you know, like in the Killsby sinkhole compared to doing a 20 meter spearfishing dive, mm. that's two completely different animals. And mate, not only that, the, the one blight on the spearfishing community is mm. this. They're more than happy to take you out but they don't give you any navigation. <laughs> like, you know, my introduction was like, there's your gear in the corner. You can swim, bud. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I can swim. Yeah, yeah, no, I got that part. Yeah. Uh, and it was just like, there's a weight belt, mast, snorkel, fins. There's your spear gun. I'll show you how to load it in there or just give it to me. I'll load it for you, which was more to the point. <laughs> um, but there's just, like, they were gone, you know. Yeah. And, and I, <laughs> I get it. You know, they're so obsessed with finding fish because they're like, there could be a coral trout underneath the boat, right? So they're just like, I could not believe how quickly they got ready. Yeah. And they were in. And I'm still stuffing around with the wetsuit. How does this go on? So that would be the one blight on the Spiro community is yeah. very little navigation on how to do it for newbies. <laughs> I, I reckon like a lot of blokes are like that in general. There's just this assumed level of competence and everyone's forgotten that, we all started somewhere like job sites are like that, you know, mm. like mm. everyone just assumes kind of everyone knows where to go and what to do and spearfishing is exactly the same. Like, and, and sometimes when you're surrounded by very competent people, you don't really want to ask the silly questions. Well, that's right. And I, like my first experience with spearfishing was of drowning. <laughs> like I am, I am such a dense human in a lot of ways, both mentally and physically, but I sink like a rock. <laughs> and so I put this weight belt on, which felt wrong from the get-go, right? <laughs> it had way too many plates on it, as Spiros often do. Yeah. And um, so I jumped in and I just was plummeting mm. to the bottom to begin with. Like the surface <laughs> just left me. And I'm holding this gun I didn't know how to load. And yeah. I basically was just kicking as hard as I could to stay on the surface. And I went, something does not feel right. <laughs> I shouldn't be sinking, surely. So my first experience was cl like honestly of drowning. So I took the weight belt off, threw it in the boat and threw the gun back in the boat because I was like, I don't know, there's, there's ropes and shit everywhere. There's like, I don't know how to load this thing. So I basically just became a snorkeler. Yeah. Um, so that, that was my intro to spearing. It was, yeah. That, that, would, um, that would lead you to freediving as well because you'd just be like, well, Sweet, there's no equipment. You just you're into it, and away you go. Well, it it absolutely did because I, you know, and and it's probably like some of some of your listeners might have know, know this story, but I I was really struggling with life on land at the time that mm. I, that a friend of mine took me out there, really struggling, um, and you know, in terms of when I got out there, I had completely kind of. Um, forgotten about all those those issues on land um, and it was the environment itself but I remember getting back on the boat and saying to this mate that took me, I said, mate, I don't know what that is or was but I need more of it. <laughs> and, he, and he turned to me and he said, you just get it. And I was like, what do I get? He goes, you just get it, mate. And I said to him, I think I need to do one of those freediving courses because I was watching you go to 20. And, you know, he was laying on the sand, throwing sand up. I had no idea what he was doing and fish yeah. were coming out to see what it was. And, but I was like, I want to I wanna be able to do that, like what you just did. And, and he said to me, oh, you don't need that rubbish. You don't need free diving course. You know, just come with me, mate. You just get better. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, mate, you got kids, I got kids. How often do you get out? Oh, once a month. And I said, so you're telling me if our schedules line up, once a month I'm just going to get better. And he's like, yeah, mate, yeah. I was like, I feel like there's more to this. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, it did lead me too. to free diving because I, I wanted, and I'm very much this type of beast, I wanted the fast track. I wanted to be at 20 tomorrow. Yeah. I didn't want to spend a year of going to 12 metres. Yeah. And that's not a good thing, but that's just the beast that I was. So many, like I had a similar start to you, but I didn't even, well, I wasn't even lucky enough to get out on a boat. I was mm. like down the road from here mm. in a, boating passage illegally shooting flathead, you know, with another bloke who was as equally clueless as I was. 
So like free diving in clear water compared to the three, four meter flatty bashing in an illegal area was kind of where I started. Um, and I didn't really even have the money for a free diving course either, but I still shared that same idea as you like that. Let's do a free diving course. There's a, there's an old guard in the, in the sparing world though, and they are really anti free diving courses. And the argument I hear most commonly, and I mean, I know you're open to discussion. So, but they would say that doing a free diving course is like learning how to drive a Ferrari and then like on a racetrack and then bringing that Ferrari back and then trying to uh, just drive around the streets in it. And, and that's kind of the analogy they use. Like you, you've now learned all the skill. You've gone down a line to, you know, maybe you've gone down to 20 something meters or whatever in a controlled environment under supervision and you've learned the skills to do that. And they say it doesn't correlate to our spearfishing experience. What do you sort of say to guys that have that criticism? Look, that's, a, that's actually a real criticism. Um, but it, it really depends on the type of instructor you have in freediving and the type of ethos that they have. So, you know, I, I do remember doing my first course and my guy was just pushing me to the extremes. Yeah? Yeah. So, like, my first level course... I did a four minute 34 static. Oh, shit. First time ever, right? And that's instructor level. Yeah. But because he could see that I was competitive with myself. And so he's pushing me, you know, like my, I'm face down in a pool and he's like, you got 20 seconds. And so I'd sit there for the 20. And then he could see I wanted to come up, you got 10. You know, and then I'm, I'm like, yeah, I do have 10, you know, because I'm super competitive. And yeah. there's a bit of the ego there too, right? Yeah, yeah. You got five. And then next minute I'm doing, you know, just short of bloody five minute statics. Um, and he let me on my first level course, I dove to 35 meters. Now oh, I had a swimming background and, I've, and, and that competitiveness as well, it all culminated in diving stupid deep, but I should have never have been allowed to dive that deep. Yeah. So, you know, you know me and how I coach, I'm very much feel it out, um, safely progress slowly, that type of thing. And so, you know, there's, it, I, I suppose it comes down to the instructor mm. and just like when I talk about spearfishing, I say it is it is a different beast. Yeah. You don't have a reference point. Your reference points are surface and bottom, mm. you know, and yeah. we're not often blessed with super clear water. Yeah. So, so you can't even see the bottom. It's super different but there's some principles that obviously, particularly with the safety side of things, that's yeah. where I see the spearing community fall down a little bit. I mean I still – I live right next to the boat ramp. And I still see them in their camo burning out in their <laughs> little tinny and their spear guns in there. And, you know, I just look at it and I'm like, God, that's, you know, and I've unfortunately walked past this boat ramp where everyone's breaking down crying because they've lost one of their guys from the community. And I just think, you know, and it's the same old story every time and it can be avoided. So it's more, you know, I do get Spiros come to my courses and it's more the, you know, you don't want to come back to the boat ramp and have to tell their family that they're out there somewhere and, and the police are searching for them. And I know that's a pretty dark picture to paint, mm -hmm. but these things can be avoided so um, so quickly. But but to your point, it is right. Sometimes they get a false sense of, man, I held my breath for three minutes in a pool not moving and I went down a line straight up and down in a super controlled environment. I did 20 and then they go out into the ocean and think they're a 20 meter Spiro, which yeah. is definitely not the case. I try not never to talk about, you know, my own personal numbers on the show. A, mm. because they're not very impressive. <laughs> 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 but B, because like it gives people a false economy. Like mm. it has very little relevance to what we actually do, you know. Like some of my workmates know I spear. They even know I have a spearing podcast. They say, how long can you hold your breath? And I go, well, it doesn't really have much to do with what I do in the water. I said like, to be honest, the average like dive I do is probably under a minute. Mm. You know, if I'm going all the time and I'm in decent shape and I'm training and I'm getting amongst it, you know, I might push that out a fair bit. But I, I'm generally like we follow these systems and stuff and by then you've read them a book and they just wanted a, uh, you know, like they wanted your highlight reel. Yeah. And I, I just find the highlight reel doesn't actually do a lot for people. It's, um, you know, it's a much bigger question. I think it's… It's hard to be succinct sometimes with people. They want the cliff notes and you're like, well, the cliff notes aren't going to help you. And that's, and that's the biggest thing that I, I often talk about in, in my courses or to people full stop is, you know, um, it's all about, whether it's spearing or free diving, it's all about feeling it out on the day mm. and on the dive, dive per dive. And this is, 
you know, people and friends of mine and stuff, they say, oh, I'm a, th- I'm a 30 metre Spiro. And I say, on what day? Yeah. And they go, well, what do you mean on what day? And I was like, on what day? Like, you're not a 30 metre Spiro every day. Like, yeah. Some days you feel like crap. Like the human body from a physiological standpoint and psycho- psychological standpoint is different on yeah. every day. And I even find it sometimes on different dives. Mm. So li- even like at a competitive level with free diving, some days I go out there and I'm like, oh man, I am in sync. My body's loving diving deep. And then literally the next day, nothing's changed. Same location, same place, same human. And I am just not right. I am just, and so that's one of the the traps that I think a lot of people get into as well. On both sides, it's like, I am a 30 meter spear or I am a 40 meter free diver. But each dive, you just got to feel it out and just enjoy the experience of diving, no matter what that depth is, and separate that ego from what's going on. The Pressure Project is a super cool name. Walk me through a little bit more of the ethos that underlines where this name come from. Yeah, so that that name was born from um, – I did my first freediving course mm. and as I just said, you know, I, I dove fairly deep straight away, which I should have never been let do. But what I realised was that I actually revelled in that deep pressure. That's real, right? Mm. You cannot wish it away. You cannot be down there in the ocean deep and go, it's not there, it's not there, it's not yeah. there. It's there. Like yeah. it's, it's literally crushing you. Mm. But for some reason I remember being deep on the, on the free diving line and before that I might have done a 20-metre dive spearing because it all started with spearing for me. And I remember being there though at about that 35-metre mark and just loving it. And sitting there kind of going, I don't want to go back to surface because all the shit's up there, all yeah. the noise, all the people that can get at me. You know, I'm so far removed from humans down here. Mm. It's great. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then when I, I had these moments then on land after that where I was like, why can I deal with that actual real pressure? But then on land, pressure that's not actually real when you think about it, right? Mm. Like in Australia, no one starves. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, no one yeah. starves in this country. But yet when things are going a little bit bad at work, people lose. And I, it's, I'm, I was in the same boat. Absolutely derail me financially if I was going bad in relationships, you know, with partners or I was married at the time. And so I was like the, the juxtaposition between real pressure in the ocean and the pressures of everyday life, I was like, why can't I deal with the stuff on land but yet in the ocean when it's actually real – And, you know, there is the potential for things to actually go wrong from your life's point of view. Mm. Why do I revel in the ocean? And so then I started doing research. I started writing a book and I started, you know, I was like, pressure. And there was nothing out there. You know, like when you typed in pressure into um, uh, Google. Comes up with Boyle's Law. Yeah, it would go into into either science or you'd get John Farnham. Take the pressure. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so I was like, no one's really... Or Queen. Ding, yeah. ding, ding, <laughs> yeah, ding, ding, ding. That's right. <laughs> so, so I was like, no one's really working in this space of just mm. what is actual pressure. Because even at a sporting level, at any sport, you hear commentators, they're like, oh, this particular player is under so much pressure. Mm. And if you actually ask them, I said, what does that mean? Oh, no, well, they're just under lots of pressure to perform. I was like, but why is that person under more than the other 16 players that are yeah. on this field? Like, mm. uh, Why? Oh, you know, they're just, you know, pressure. They don't actually understand it. So, mm. you know, that's that's where the name was born. It was obviously the mental health side of things as well was big for me because what I realised was that inability to deal with the pressures of life on land was what derailed me. I didn't have any techniques. I didn't have any real-world things mm. that I could do on a daily basis to help me get through or navigate life. Mm. It was just like... Chin up, brother. It'll be fine. Oh, you know, get better. And you know, you know, as men, you know, and I, I, you know, as you would know, like with rugby, I played rugby league. As a as a man, you pretended you weren't hurt, right? Mm. There was times on that football field where I was hurt. I was, my, you know, my shoulders gone, and I'm just like for my mates, I have to pretend I'm not. Get up, hit the next person. And so I think with us men, that can extend to everything else. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Emotionally, mm. um, where you just go, I'm not hurt. You know, people say, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. You know, yeah. but inside you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you are actually feeling like close to death. Yeah. But what is the standard thing you do? 
Yeah, I'm good, but yeah, I'm all good. Yeah, there's, a, there's so much to this topic. Like, um, yeah, one thing like, you know, like I loved about your courses and your personality, the way you teach, I don't feel any performance anxiety and I'm a person that, that is easily affected by other people putting uh, performance sort of stuff onto me. And when we did our stage two course and when I did my instructors, you just kind of glazed over the requirements and told us like, you that'll just that'll just happen you know you'll just do it like you're more than capable you know you, you know you're amazing you know and and there was just kind of this like just relax we're gonna have fun we're gonna we're gonna do this thing and there was never anything about numbers or and i love that and i thrive in that environment sometimes where there is no no expectation i I, I think I come under that that anxiety pretty easy i love that i want to do that in my courses as a fairly new instructor, though, I feel that I'm I'm thinking about what the requirements are because I need to be aware as the instructor. Mm. But my students don't need that. They just need me to guide them through in a controlled fashion where they feel calm, relaxed and capable. Mm. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's all about I – set, I set the um, – I set – I'm all about setting the environment right. So – as a knowing the physiology of the human body, um, I know that everyone who comes, their body knows how to do these dives, right? And your listeners probably know all this stuff, but you know, things like the mammalian dive reflex, we are built just like orcas, whales, seals, all the rest of it. So I know that each individual, their body knows how to do breath hold diving. So it's really what I, I work very hard on is making it super okay to be anxious, giving them permission to be in that state. Yeah, right so one of the first questions I ask when someone comes to a course is I, and I, I, I literally say, put your hand up and I put my own hand up. I say, put your hand up right now if you're anxious about what we're about to do today. And oh, some people, like that. And some people are really truthful and yeah. they, their hand goes up. Everyone, like it's probably about 50-50. Yeah. Some people put their hand up. And then they look at everyone else and some of them put it back down because other people aren't putting it up, yeah. right? <laughs> and so it's a really funny – it's really funny to see human psychology in this moment. But then the other ones kind of put it down and go, oh, do, do, am I supposed to admit that? You know, like <laughs> – Because no one asks you anywhere else that. No. And so then, and so then I say, everybody put your bloody hand up. And then they all put their hand up and I'm like, good. We are all anxious about what we're about to do. Everybody in this room is anxious. I'm about to take your breath away and not in a good way, right? <laughs> so, so I say oxygen is number one in terms of hierarchy of human needs and it brings up primal fears of being suffocated or can I get back to the surface yeah, or will yeah. I drown? Like it's a bloody fear that everyone has at some point. And so I, I say to them, I say, be kind to yourself. And just know that you're not the only one sitting there worrying about yeah, wow. what is about to happen today. Because they all know it. They've signed up for a free diving course. Yeah. Um, and so I just say, it do I don't care where you get to. It really doesn't matter today. That Today is not about that. Yeah. Today is about feeling it out and just, just being introduced to a new sport. I don't care. Whether you do one minute or ten minutes today, I couldn't give a rat's, right? Mm. It's all about feeling it out. And just being introduced to a new sport. Mm. Who cares? And yeah. then you just see, you almost see like a pressure valve that's attached yeah. to their neck just go like, yeah. and they all just sink down and go like, oh, okay, so I don't need to compete with, you know, and the guys are competitive. And girls quite often are much better freedivers in the beginning because they quite often have the ability to separate ego from the sporting side of it. So yeah. you see the girls, they're like, oh, well, we didn't care anyway. But you see the guys, especially when they turn up with a mate, they're like, I'm going to hose you, champion. And you see them on the line, they're like, you got to 12, I'm going to 13. I'm more relaxed than you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like my, the, the answer to that question, and, and it's the same, like, and for listeners out there that might want to get their friends or family or partner into spearfishing, this is important because mm – -hmm. You know, the, the reason they may not want to come out on your boat is is because of that. Because yeah. there's probably a lot going on for them. Firstly, a lot of people are scared of sharks <laughs> and they know sharks live out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, some of it can be performance anxiety. 
Like, oh, you're my mate. I want to impress you, but I, I feel like I'm going to be shit at it. Mm. You know, you're an instructor now. One of the first things quite often people say to you is, oh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't hold my breath for 30 seconds. And you're like, well, you can. And they're like, yeah. no, I couldn't. I tried in the spa once, you know. Yeah. And it's like, well, you could. Um, so there's that performance anxiety side of things. So, you know, for people out there who want to introduce their loved ones or their friends to spearfishing, just know you've, you've got to set that environment in such a way that you're like, man, come out. We're just going to snorkel. Yeah. And, you know, I might teach you how to snorkel to three metres or you might become an advanced extreme snorkeler by the end. Like, who knows? But <laughs> give them the space to come and just chill. Yeah. Because what, what I – I remember going out and I was, you know, I was a, a pretty handy swimmer in my day. So I was like, I, I got water covered. Yeah. But I remember standing on the end of the boat. The two guys, mate, they were yonder. They were gone. <laughs> All I could see was floats out in the distance. <laughs> and I remember looking down and going – and then looking back at Malula Bar, and it was a long way, right, mm. for me. I'd never been out in the open ocean. And then I'm looking down just going, oh, man, what, what happens if one of those sharks does come? Because I've heard that they do give a bit of curry to Spiros from time to time. Like, what do I do? Yeah. And so, but there was no nurturing <laughs> yeah. from these other guys. So, you know, and, and part of, to answer your question as well, mate, is a huge part of your your role as a freediving instructor, if we focus on that for a second, is just building belief in them because belief is a super strong thing. Yeah. So it's the set up the environment to be one that's like soft and nurturing and all the rest of it. Mm. Make sure they know that it's okay to be anxious. But then also from there, build the belief in them. You know, mm. and I talk a lot about you know the history of free diving and the evolution of humans and how we're built for it and wow the mammalian dive reflex when triggered is the strongest thing in the human body and that's what gives us the ability to dive and I tell them that quite often towards the getting close to the dive day I'm like your body knows how to get to the bottom of 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 out there like 27 meters it knows how to get there mm. but your head doesn't so what we're going to do across today is we're going to build belief in you we're going to do it nice and softly. And, you know, you you, you got to do the rest. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a nice, safe environment. I don't care where you get to, but, you know, just feel it out. Yeah, nice, man. Got a sweet deal for you today, guys. Go to freedivingfamily.com and learn from Adam Stern and a select team of experts on different disciplines. There's Frenzel, Advanced Frenzel, and Hands-Free Equalization, Mouthful, Deep Frenzel Equalization, Bifinning Essentials. These are courses that will give you the 1% that will allow you to improve. Use the code SPIRO to get 20% off any course at freedivingfamily.com. Again, that's the code SPIRO to get 20% off at freedivingfamily.com. Thanks, Adam and team. Love it. Are you following at Old Man Blue Dive on Instagram yet? Bert Calder, creator of the Old Man Blue Dive Gear is an absolute legend. They're people that froth on the sparing life and intentionally make super hard wearing and practical gear that will stand the test of time. Visit oldmanblue.com.au and check out a bunch of tough, robust equipment made by people that are just as passionate about spearing as you are. oldmanblue.com.au I like how you almost like pull yourself off a pedestal, put yourself on the level. How do you go with uh, banter? Because I'm like a banter rich guy. But when you're in a position of like teaching people, like your banter's got to be like quite strategic because you like like you said, you're trying to put belief into people and banter typically is belittling people in a friendly, loving way. And generally like if, if in Australian Kiwi culture, like if we're having banter with other blokes, it's because we like them. Yeah. And if it's if it's worse than that, you can kind of tell. I use banter like it's like a love language or something. Absolutely. I don't know if it's an effective one, but like with students, it, it, it just seems like a delicate little no. Man. You just smash them with as much banter <laughs> as you can. Look, if you're having fun, yeah, and you're taking the piss out of people, mm. then it becomes less serious. Yeah. So, so the overarching thing that I get from people that sometimes come to me. And sometimes they're redoing the same course they've already done. Mm. Is they've quite often run into an instructor that, and it's not, I'm not saying it's wrong, but super serious yeah. and super like, oh my God, here's all the things that can go wrong. And we're going to focus on these, you know. And yes, you have to do that as an instructor. Yeah. 
but I spend just as much, if not more time, focusing on all the things that can go right. Yeah. How can this sport recreation change your bloody life? Yeah. And how can you have fun with it? You know, so I'm constantly like, you know, I make all my people, and you'll know this, when they come up and they make the okay signal, yeah. I make them say it like Bora. I am have okay. to say it. I am okay. Yeah. I like it aesthetic a lot. Like, yeah. And they're small things yeah. that everyone laughs about it. It's but, it but it takes the, you know, but importantly, I still like, you know, if I'm talking about loss of motor control or blackout, mm. there's a moment there where I say, hey, yeah. This I think is sometimes serious. when you separate it too like that and you're – fun for the most part and, you know, and then all of a sudden you turn and you have these serious moments, mm. people actually engage. Yeah. You We're, see them sit back and go, yeah. I have to listen to this. It's really effective communicating. I'm kind of in awe because even when I was learning scuba diving, my first instructor, um, he was awesome. He was a mm. farmer uh, in Taranaki. His name was Ron Opie. And he was the most fun bloke. We would get we would get on the beers with him. Mm. We would stay at a backpackers in Wellington. And, and sometimes he was just like, we've got to punch out these dives. Well, I think we're trying to get through 50 or something dives or whatever. Maybe it was 100. I can't remember. But like we would dive like in like sewerage ponds almost, like doing a search for some random item in three meters of water, but we were just clocking up a dive. But he always made it fun. And he'd had a guy get bent on a previous course, like get proper bent running out of air, getting crayfish in 25 meters and screaming for the service. And he, and he got the bends. And he didn't allow it to affect him too much. He was always fun. And, and he was, for me, he, he, it was a large part of putting that joy in, in my life about scuba diving in the underwater world. The next instructor I had was the opposite. He was at the back end of a long career teaching scuba diving. And he was dry and serious. And it was just shit. Honestly, like it was miserable. I, he, he tried, it was almost like he was trying to steal my joy from scuba diving and cut me down and, you know, like that, you, your instructors have an important role, not just in teaching all of the stuff, but really in setting the tone and the mood for the way you approach the lifestyle. I want people to go spearfishing forever, you know, like I, I love this lifestyle. Why, why would I not want other people to love it too? But I guess maybe repetition as well, doing something for too long and then it starts to you steal the joy from you maybe as well. I don't know. Maybe that had set in for this guy. Yeah. I, look, I mean, I've <laughs> – I mean, some people are built to present and some aren't. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, in all true. honesty, yeah. you know, some people um, – you know, you look at a comedian and then you look at a school principal. Yeah. Right. Who do you want to who do you want to listen to? It's, <laughs> it's as simple as that, right? Yeah. If you're – if you feel like you're being talked at, um, and, and even at some point, someone coming from a, a position of authority and yeah. telling you, the, you know, the ways of the world. Yeah. That's when people push back, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like especially from a spearfishing point of view, you know, like I, I get a bit of pushback from spearos that are in my course sometimes, you know, they go, oh, that's not real world. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, cool, hey, let's have a chat about it. What, what, what don't you think is real yeah. world about that? And, you know, because they, they – you get taught from the monkeys in the room, right? <laughs> that's, mm. That was a very old saying that one of my yeah. bosses said. Um, and so, you know, they, they get nurtured by someone who has their particular beliefs. And I just say, look, I'm not saying I know it all. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm a shit Spiro. I'm happy to say it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I enjoy it, mm. but I'm not a very good Spiro. Mm. I, I, I definitely gravitated more towards freediving and freediving deep. I yeah. really enjoyed that, that mental challenge of that. Um, but, you know, getting back to your point, you just you got to have fun because what, what else is life about? Yeah. You know, like if you if you go to something and you, you don't have fun, you don't enjoy it, there's more than a big chance that you're not going to pursue that. You're not going to keep going with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, I do say – I say some stupid things, I must admit. Like I, I talk about how in the early days of free diving or spearfishing, it's not an oxygen game. It's a CO2 game. Mm. And I'm like – and CO2 is hard to deal with and this, mm. is, this is how I literally say it. And I'm like because CO2 in high levels of the human body is toxic to us. And I'm like, the great news is before it becomes toxic, you'll black out. <laughs> and I put this big smile on my face and people like start laughing and then they look at each other and like, isn't that serious though? And I go like, and I just got this massive smile. I hold it for ages and then I'm like, now, don't get me wrong. Most of the stuff I like to speak about is the nice, fluffy, beautiful parts of freediving. Mm. But there is some things that can go wrong. And seriously wrong. But if you do some really small things, if you have some 
things that you just are non-negotiables, you will walk out of free diving, spear fishing, alive, always. Yeah. But, you know, and so I, I always, I quite often introduce serious topics with a laugh. And I say, for a very long time, I found, I, I was really peeved that I couldn't black out. And everyone, again, they all look at me like, what the hell's going on here? I thought this was serious, right? And I'm like, this was at a competitive level in swimming pools. There's no finishing line and I'm too competitive. So I would be like, I've at least got six kicks in me. Turns out I only had three. <laughs> and then I had a nap, you know. And then I say, and when I came back too, I had no idea what had gone on. Mm. I just thought I'd come up from a successful dive and the judges were in front of me. So I took my nose clip off and I went like this and I said, I'm okay. But mm. I'd blacked out, right? And everyone laughs. But then I say, but seriously, guys, like the thing with loss of motor control and blackout is I've only ever done that in a swimming pool at a competition where I've got two safety divers following me in the pool. Mm. I've got a paramedic on the side. I've got emergency oxygen. I know that I'm in the best possible place to blackout. And again, I do it with a smile. And they go, they look at each other and they're like, I mean, we're not supposed to blackout, right? And I'm like, of course you're bloody not, right? And here's all the things that will stop you from it, you know, yeah. and, and particularly when I get to the spearfishing side because in the freediving world, spearfishing holds the most risk, bar none, mm. right? No reference point, no line. You can't connect yourself to a lanyard, to a rope that can just be pulled up. Um, again, like current. we're not blessed. Yeah, current. We're not blessed with viz, so yep. you lose your buddy. And, you know, so we spend quite a bit of time on the safety side. And it was great when I had you on my course because I had a completely different perspective as well and I learned some stuff. I was like, yeah. And, you know, one of the things you said to me that I, I've definitely picked up and I now use is the onus has to be on the diver. Mm. You know, that diver who goes down with the gun has to kind of control, well, not control themselves, that's the wrong word, but they need to take some responsibility and not want to put their buddy in a position where their buddy's got to A, find them mm. and then rescue them in the middle of the ocean. Mm. You know, like that's, I don't ever want to put, so, like I know I can dive for a long time and I take people on retreats and we go out, you know, on the courses and stuff. Mm. I never do big dives, mm. never. I never push to the point where I have a contraction. Mm. You know, I don't want to put someone in a position, and you're in the same boat as me, brother, mm. where they have to rescue a plus-size freediver. <laughs> you know, like, it's not right. I'm 100 kilos. In my course, I used myself as the punishment, like, for the rescues. <laughs> I was like, all right, and if you are shit at this, I'm going to force you to rescue a 120-plus kilo man from the bottom, I'm deliberately going to overweight so that you're going to have to haul me up and rescue me. And, uh, and then, you know, but some of the guys – particularly the guys that got a knack for it, they they were keen for the challenge. And uh, it's really cool. Like we gave – and this is a, kind of leading into my next question. Like every single guy probably had at least five turns at rescuing someone from sort of up to seven metres of water, sort of somewhere between – we started off – like we started off standing level. and then we, But then the next day we, we went to sort of like probably four to seven metres and it was on sand. It was, we had decent viz. And I wanted them to get as much practice as they could, grabbing them from the left, grabbing them from the right, grabbing them upside down, um, taking their weight belt off even because we were over sand so you can get their weight belt. One of my issues is deciding – because with teaching spearing and freediving too, you can see exactly where a person is at. And the temptation is when you've got an overdeveloped sense of responsibility – is to never stop teaching these guys. Mm. So, like, I think Karen and I were doing, you know, average 12, 14-hour days, like from waking moment to sleeping at night. And some of the guys commented, the course was amazing because you guys were available at every waking moment. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's true. And I loved it too. And it was great. But you didn't speak to anyone for the next week yeah, after that. <laughs> well, that's how it felt. And then I went straight back into my 50-hour-a-week job and then uh, and running the podcast. And, and, as, and as joyful a pursuit as it is, and I love giving in to people and just helping them get as much out of a weekend as they can because this is a big big deal for a lot of guys, you know, like doing a course like this. And, you know, so these guys had easily five turns at rescuing each other. And, and it was cool to spend so much time on that important facet. I don't regret it at all. But where do you sort of go, okay, this is this course and this is kind of what we can provide and then over and above this, like, you know, come back for another course. It's pretty much like it's not a crude thing like that, but it's just like, you know, where do you set your limits so that so that it's healthy for you and sustainable? Because I'll be honest, like 
I, I got home. I was pretty, <laughs> I was pretty burnt out. And then you know, straight back into work. I was not a great workmate Monday, um, and I was not a great husband. Um, it took me a few days. So please give me some of your wisdom, mate. It's tough. It's really tough to manage that. Um, and you know, I say it in my breath workshops. I say to people, um, the power of breath is that we are doing it unconsciously. Mm. So when we go to sleep throughout the day, we generally don't think about it, right? But it's also something that you can change and affect in every second of every day, right? So right now, and this is what I say to them. So right now, you and I are doing this podcast. We are breathing like shit, Mm. right? Yeah. Because we're talking too much. So we've got yeah. no focus on our breath. Mm. And our oxygen and CO2 levels play a huge role in our health. Mm. So what you would have been feeling, mate, is you would have talked for basically almost three days straight. Mm. So your whole equilibrium, your homeostasis, your body is not doing well because you're not, your, your breathing patterns are off. Yeah. So like you generally on average, you probably breathe somewhere around 12 breaths per minute. When you start to talk too much, that breathing rate goes through the roof. So you're over breathing. Mm. So you're really actually putting your body out. So look, what I what I what I would suggest is because I'm in the same boat, mate. I come back from running a retreat or a course, p- particularly retreats, which you've experienced now. And I sometimes even joke about it with the students. Like we get to the end of the retreat, like you know, for example, one of them's Lady Ellie. We fly back off the island on the mainland and we get there and everyone's like, oh, my God, that was great. And I was like, don't talk to me. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Once we leave that island. Do you want to go for a beer, Adam? <laughs> she's over. I'm like, yeah. no, don't talk to me. Don't ring me. Don't email me. We're done. Give me a week. <laughs> um, but, no, it's a, it's a very real thing that's hard to manage. Yeah. So what I've found is, um, you know, it's sometimes is even building, you can build things into your course. Like even my breath workshop, I like to try and do it myself whilst they're doing it. So I'll say, this is the type of breath that we do. And I'll actually do it with them. I'll lay them down, but I'll lay down myself and I'll do it with them because for that three to five minutes of working them through some some kind of breath that gets them into their parasympathetic or your, your rest, digest and regenerate system, I also get that three to five minutes. Yeah, nice. So... And, you know, building times where I say like, you know, particularly you came to Killsby, like Eckhart and I, I say, brother, you know, we need to build in time to get a coffee and sit down and just decompress from the day before. So let's have a coffee. Let's talk about some of the things that we need to do today, but let's also just shoot the breeze. Let's talk shit um, about all the students. And no, we don't. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it's, it's, like it's something that not even I can manage fully. Um, but to be honest, mate, 12, 14, 14 hours, like I'd like to go to your retreat, mate. I don't give people oh, 12 to 14 you, hours. You'd have, <laughs> you'd have fun. We tried to over-deliver. I felt like sometimes it's like almost like you're overcompensating because it, like I, I still feel like a new instructor. We're doing a new thing. Um, we're making numerous muck-ups and mistakes. But, but trying to do more to make up for it doesn't necessarily work. I, I, I'm stoked that our guys had a magic time, but it was as much to do with the weather and conditions as the locations as it was for us. That breathing workshop I did for them, I think everyone had a great time with it. I was flat out trying to remember all the prompts. and <laughs> You know, like I love it though. Like the, the one you did with us, like the pranayama walking stuff and that, I thought, man, that's all yogi freedive bullshit. Um, <laughs> you know, like it's just crap, but. Like I said to you, like honestly, like on those weekend, that weekend we did, I came home. I I, I felt like I had proper been in my parasympathetic. I had gone down a full clothing size. I'm not even exaggerating. Yeah, wow. And life just felt better for the week. Mm. Um, but on the teaching end of it, <laughs> I didn't feel any of that. <laughs> I just felt like I drank too much beer trying to um, go to sleep at night. Um, but it was fun. It was fun. Like pouring yourself out is fun, um, especially when you're doing something you love. But but it's definitely yeah, trying to get that balance. I, I think um, I'll be picking your brain a bit more. Yeah, and 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 honestly, with, with anything that you do in life, sometimes less is actually more. So the yeah, the, I the, learn this. the <laughs> if you burn yourself out over that, they'll they'll people can sometimes feel that when you're a bit um, rattled, a bit tired, a bit. So it is important in any sphere. And they talk about. Like in the yoga meditation world, they they do talk about like you got a ball of energy inside of you, yeah. And you do have to be careful 
and how much of that energy you give away. Yeah. Right? Um, I give it all away. <laughs> no, I, like, mate, I cannot. I I've cannot, burnt out even recently. Like I burnt out. I yeah. cannot point the finger because I do it. Yeah. And, you know, I see – and I'm not afraid to say it. I see like I, – I like to call her my mental strength coach. Yeah. But really she's my mental health coach. Um, and I check in with her even when I'm good. I like that mental strength yeah. coach. Yeah. Mate, that's beautiful. Well, you think about I love like, the way you reframe stuff. Like it, <laughs> it's just so good for me. Like, Well, when you say mental health coach to other blokes, they go, oh. And they, they kind of don't want to talk about it. Then. Yeah. They go, oh, are you right, mate? You yeah, know, but when yeah, I say yeah, yeah. when I say my str- mental strength coach, they go, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know, like if you're training hard, and I am training hard at the moment, I'm training for a freediving comp, you know, you, you have a coach. Mm. Says like, do this and do this. You get stronger through this area yeah. and do this and blah blah blah. But you know, us blokes, you know, mentally, you know, we're not always super strong. We just hide yeah, our shit, hundred percent. And so I check in with this lady all the time, and she says oh. to me, Adam, right now, you've given too much of that ball of energy away. You need to build in some time for yourself, and I do. Yeah. You know, yeah. I used to be such a control freak with the pressure project that I didn't let go of things, and yeah. now I have. You know, I've got uh, my girl Eloise and I, I'm like, hey, you're running the course this weekend. I'm spent, you yeah. know, and I'm like, I need some help on this. Can you help me this X, Y, and Z? And I never used to be able to do that yeah. because I was always a bit of a control freak with like, oh, these people have to have the best possible experience and I can't let go of that because maybe someone else might not do as good a job as me. Yeah. But you know what? Maybe someone else might do a bloody better job than me. Yeah. Um, and or they give me the space to... <laughs> Like have a rest. So then next time I do a course, I am twice the presenter, twice yeah, the yeah. coach because I've had some rest. So, mm. you know, blokes out there, you know, if you if you are struggling with anything, it's it's not weak to kind of go and get some help. And mm. call them a mental strength coach. Mm. Call them your mental Spiro coach. Like, oh, this, this you, person. Yeah, you how go. do you find a good one? Oh, mate, I'm super lucky. I, you know, I just got put on to someone and she's not even necessarily like – your atypical psychologist. She's done all the kind of left of center type of thing. Like there's NLP stuff and and yeah. the, went down the yoga track and the meditation track. But um, you know, it, it you might have to go through a few nupties to find the good one. Yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's bloody worth it. You know, yeah, hundred percent. And sometimes it's not even. I'm not even searching for things that I don't know. Sometimes I go and she just reaffirms something that I do know, yeah. and then I use it. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to really put into people sometimes, you know, like, you know, when you've got students and stuff and a family, like, you're always putting into them, you know. You want to see people around you thrive and be nurtured. But when you're in a real shit spot yourself, it's very hard to do that, you know. Yeah. And I find myself operating out of that too much. Like, mm. a, a lot of the time, honestly, one of my saving graces is this friggin' podcast. Yeah. Because I, I talk to just legends and I get to pick their brain yeah. like I'm doing today with yeah, you. Yeah. And I and I and I come away nourished, you know, like mm. as much as a do, recording a podcast can be, and we're breaking down the third or fourth wall here, um, <laughs> but like it, it can be like a real, you know, experience where you receive a lot, you know, mm. even though it, there's an element of performance in it, it's still like there's very much a, a giving and receiving streak. I love that, and I feel I feel like sometimes listeners they they enjoy that too because they see me learning something, or you know, and then and then it's good for them. Oh, absolutely. And in this world, you know, I remember someone um, came into a corporate world where I was working at the time and, and, it, and it's so true. He, he said, in nature, if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah. And he said, and, that's, and that's, across, uh, that's across everything. And he said, so as a, even as a human, if you're not growing as a person, and I mean, obviously, at some point, physically, we stop growing and we actually do start to die. But if you're not growing spiritually, emotionally, throughout your life, or just learning stuff, mm. you you quite literally are dying. So if you sit in your comfort zone, you're just like, I know what I know, and I do what I do, um, and I'm not willing to grow as a person or change or try and better myself or do a new skill. Like if people weren't growing, they wouldn't have found spearfishing right it's mm-hmm. not a natural thing to do like put yourself in the middle of the ocean with a gun where there's sharks and shoot shit yeah. like it's not a natural thing <laughs> but there's something so beautiful about spearfishing yeah. as well and if you don't like that's what i like about the people that come to freediving or spearfishing i call them i call those people 
they're the people on the search. Mm-hmm. They're on the search. And people go, what do you mean? I'm like, they're on the search, right? Yeah, yeah. They're on the search for something that feels good, that can they can grow with, they can, you know, even whether it's new depths or whether it's new fish or whether it's just a different environment, they're always on the search. You know, you don't mm. – you, you don't – and the thing, like when you speak to people about free diving or spear fishing, no one ever goes boring. Yeah, <laughs> everyone always goes like, "Holy shit! How yeah, yeah. how long can you hold your breath for? How yeah. deep can you dive? Yeah, yeah. Have you run like with spearing? Have you run into sharks before?" So they're intrigued, but they may not necessarily be on the search because they won't take that leap. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love a functional and simple spear gun that I can trust when I pull the trigger. Kill shot spear guns utilize the finest of kiln-dried Burmese teak. Killshot spear guns also combine American-made parts and fine craftsmanship to bring you accurate, reliable, and simple spear guns that you can trust fish after fish. Get $30 off any Killshot spear gun at killshotspearguns.com. Yes and amen, Uber. That's $30 off American-made performance spear guns at killshotspearguns.com. I'm really sorry for this terrible accent. Brought to you by Ed Martin at KillshotSpearGuns.com. Hey guys, not sure how you stay hydrated out on the boats on those long days out on the water. Uh, but staying hydrated is absolutely critical to good, good equalization and looking after your body, making sure you're not doing those awkward one-legged kicks to the surface when, when one leg cramps out on you. Go to aqualite.com.au and get yourself a box of sachets. You just simply add them to water. It's less than $1.28 per serve. Cheaper and healthier than any other sports drinks on the market. Aqualite will make a difference in your spearfishing. Check it out at aqualite.com.au. Use the code NoobSpiro to save 10% on any order. Check it out. Aqualite. Made in Western Australia. Yeah, I'm I'm loving these courses. It's an it's a real extension of what I've done and sort of where I've come from. So massive thanks to you for getting me to where I am now. Hopefully, we're going to do some collab stuff coming up. So um, definitely get you over on some of our our strati retreats. Uh, I've got to get the birth of my next child out of the way first, and then we'll we'll be resetting um, back into this year. But yeah, man, we're going to do some more stuff. It's going to be fun. Can't wait, man. And now you're going to be able to cook some fish too. I just gave you a book. Yeah, you got to get around this. It's only available. No, nah, it's actually available in every good spearfishing retailer. But <laughs> tell people where what what this wonderful treasure is that you're holding, mate. Ninety nine Spiro recipes. Um, you know, once you get past the mug on the front cover, <laughs> uh, mate, she's a good read. I tell you what, yeah. uh, I'll be getting around this. Uh, you got to get on it. Um, yeah, I loved um, when we did the Killsby retreat. Like, there's um. There's a dive spot probably only about a half hour drive from there. Mm. And um, if people want to watch the trip we did, because Cam and I recorded a trip vid. It's um, Noob Spiro lost on a freediving retreat in South Australia or something. But um, we were down there chasing lobster and um, cooking up a feed back at the jail where we stayed in Mount Gambia. Mm. Mate, it was a super cool experience. Um, I, I would recommend any Spiro, if, if you've never done a freediving course, do one of these kind of retreats like um, – you can book through the Pressure Project or um, Saltwater Sessions. Eckhart and Adam run these things, and they've got the yin yang thing going. Uh, <laughs> it, I'm kind of, I'm quietly envious. You guys do an amazing job, but I would 100% recommend jumping on and um, checking one out because, like, I went down a clothing size. You know what's going to happen for you? You know, it's, uh, it's cool. It is cool. Yeah, we work well together. He, um, he's definitely the the resident Spiro. Mm. I still haven't caught one of those uh, crayfish that you talk about. <laughs> so if any, oh, yeah. any, any any of the listeners want to give me some tips, I am hopeless. Eckhart, <laughs> when we went there, Eckhart tried to swim wide. And this is a mistake of a lot of people that have got ability. They go out deeper and they mm. think, oh, no one can, you know, get out, get this in the current in 15 metres. And here's me and Cam. Our biggest finds were in like two metres or a metre. Yeah. Oh. And, um, Look, I had the, I had the breath hold. But I get down there and it's just so different. I mean, I don't do enough of it, but the kelp's moving and it's yeah. going across your face. You can't see. And so I get rid of the kelp. And then, you know, I'm getting all these tips from Eckhart and he's like, okay, so you got to get down there. And you like, I, I'm a big body just like you are. 
and I don't really want to put my body in these caves. <laughs> so I'm like, if I get stuck, like that's a hell of a thing for me. I don't want to get stuck down there. And then you can't see, right, because your eyes don't adjust. So you got this torch and he's going, don't shine it in their eyes, just shine it to the side kind of thing, otherwise they'll run. So then I get down there, first thing I do is shine it in their eyes. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah. And then I'm shining it to the side... And he's like, oh, you got to get your arm in this. All while the swell's pushing you around, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, I can see them in there. I was like, oh, and they're close. And, man, I don't get anywhere near them. I throw yeah. my arm out. They're gone. I'm like, how the hell do you do this? So I just – I end up taking all the students around. We swim with the seals. They're easy. They come to you. Yeah, um, yeah. So that was cool too. The seals are just on the other side of the headland. So I go – you want crayfish? Go with Eckhart. He'll show you how to do it. Oh, <laughs> you want to swim with seals? Come with me. I am the seal whisperer. <laughs> it's probably because I resemble one. That they come. <laughs> so we we had one. I, I love the way they they um they do crazy shit with bubbles. They blow bubbles out, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, then, they, and they then they swish them around like, yeah, and they, they, they yeah. do amazing stuff. Oh, if you want to feel feel ordinary in the water, you just see how they move. Like yeah. they are just incredible to watch. I don't know how the great whites get them. Mm-hmm. Um, but we certainly stayed shallow because there, there was even a point where the seals stopped going out. Mm-hmm. So it was like they were playing with us, playing with us, playing with us, come this way, come this way, and we'd follow them. They'd come darting in at us and they're doing backflips and all the rest of it. And then there was just this point at like the edge of the kelp where it kind of got deeper blue and even they just went, no, we don't go past there. And then I was like, yeah, I feel like we should listen to the seals. That seems like uh, – and, we're, you know, we're in South Australia, right? So Yeah, yeah. it's I'm got a rep. Yeah. It's got a rep, 100%. Yeah. And we were out there. We, we pushed out wide and that water was just amazing, like so much surge and movement and it seems so nutrient-rich as well. Mm-hmm. Like you can see why there would be big animals lurking around. It was mm-hmm. cool. With the um, lobster, um, did Eckhart teach you to cross your fins if you get caught? No. So if you get, if you get caught in a cave, if you're diving with a buddy, the thing is you cross your legs over and that tells the people on the surface that you're stuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Because you can't signal them any other way. No. So make an X with your fins if you can or as best you can and someone will see that and go, oh, shit. Um, but a lot of the time all you got to do is let a little bit of breath out and just wiggle and and let go of something if you have to, like – whether it's your gear or whatever, it doesn't friggin' matter. You can come back and get it when you're a bit more chill. Yeah, well, that's interesting. That's really, you know, look at me growing. Look yeah. at me learning. Here, oh, man, mate. we're, we're hey? all like um, so uncomfortable learning how to get crazed. Like Cam's an animal. He's just like, he just fixates and boom, he's into it. I, I take a little bit to warm up. I'm a bit like you, but then when I'm in the game, I'm like, all right, it's cray killing time. Well, I mean, Eckhart's he's he's the man. I, I mean, I've never been associated with a Spiro that just like never comes back with nothing, right? <laughs> but um, you know, like he he sits and he's like, oh, you know, like you just got to you do have to be careful because these things can tear you apart. You know, and this is on the last one, right? Because the last one I went, I'm getting a crayfish. He goes, hey, okay, okay. I'm going to teach you all this. I'm going to teach I'm going to show you where they are and this, that and the other. And he goes, these things can tear you apart. And then in the same breath, he hands me a pair of gloves that have got holes all through them. <laughs> and I'm like, mate, it would not just give them access straight to my flesh and just tear me apart? And he's like, you'll be right. <laughs> there is something about embracing the pain. Because once you grab their horn, their carapace, particularly with the southern rock lobster, they... They're nasty, man. And they know – it's like they know where all of the sharp stuff sticking off them will go into your hand. <laughs> and you have to just like have a grip, a death grip on them and refuse to give up. But the other thing, did he teach you the forwards and backwards once you do get hold of them? <sighs> Mate, look. Because they sprawl. Yeah. Like, look, if I'm being honest, I, I think – I would have liked to have got one, but there was part of me that didn't want to get one because of all the stories and all the people who come back with their hands bleeding. Yeah. So I, I definitely had some bleeding hands. I had I had this thing where I was like, I'd like to get one. Um, I'm not disappointed if I don't. And after a little bit, I went. I, I think there was also I think there was almost some hesitation as I threw my arm into those holes. Yeah. So I almost got was like hoping that they retreated. Uh, <laughs> you were like the cray scarer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they were just, mate. They, I mean, they're super fast. Yeah, they are. But look, Eckhart, he don't worry. He 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 obviously did some coaching, but I think I think even he knew that I wasn't going to get one. <laughs> so the vegan spirit. Was... <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, All good 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 fun. Um, in terms of like your development as a free diver and stuff, and. What's what have what have been some people or some resources that have been instrumental in helping you go further? 
Look, I um, I, I was I was one of these people that took big leaps um, in depth, and that's not a good thing. I remember um, you telling me a little bit about this. Yeah, so I basically went from zero to twenty spear fishing locally here in Australia fairly quickly. Then I did my first level course where I went from twenty to thirty five. <laughs> then I had a bit of a break, went through divorce and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then I was lucky enough to be picked to represent Australia. And I went over with um, Stern, Adam Stern. And I again, I did another leap. So I then went from 35 to 50. And then... Is that when you guys recorded some of those crazy videos about the Iron Man versus Captain? Yeah, America, yeah. Some of those were when we went over and competed. Okay. Um, and then, so I went to the world championships. So my first ever competition was the world championships. Like, Far out. Um, but I wanted that, right? Because, you know, being the pressure project, I wanted to put myself on the greatest stage and see whether I could control my emotional state on the surface, which means I control my nervous system, um, on the greatest stage, because I knew that if I can do that on the surface, and this is something for life as well, right? If you can control yourself before an event, before, you know, a job interview before, you know, it can be anything like that. Um, I knew if I could control myself on the surface, the dive was academic. I knew that my body could do it. Um, so I went over there as a 50-metre diver and, mate, like, talk about imposter syndrome. Like, I'm going over there as a 50-metre diver. I'm surrounded by people that are 120-metre divers. <laughs> and I look like the guy who just carries everyone's bags. <laughs> you know, like, everyone looked like vegans and, you know, yeah. here I, I look like a rugby player. Yeah. And um, – but, you know, I then went from 50 to 72 in my first one. So um, I, I had these massive leaps, but I, I had some really good mentors. Stern was one of them. Another guy, Mike Board, who's the English champion. Um, and I was very lucky at that competition that, you know, I was even rooming with Alexei Molchanov, you know, oh, like wow. talk about. And the great thing about free diving in particular was, you know, I was, I was basically rubbing shoulders with the Michael Jordans of, of free diving. Yeah. But they were like, you know, giving me advice and stuff. And so... My journey over there from 50 to 72 was actually slow because, yeah. like, I just wanted to, you know, let's just drop that line by 20, see what happens. You know, they were like, <laughs> hey, mate, you know. We need this. This adaptation. is the championship rounds after 50. You know, people can kind of get to 50 physically and, and you know, be unscathed. Not everyone. Um, you still got to work up to that. But I, my body just went there with no, no stress at all. And so they kind of really slowed me up. And I, you know, those, those kind of guys in particular um, on that trip were really good for me because they just slowed me up and they went, hey, mate, you can hurt yourself here. And, and you know, people can die in this sport if you do something really stupid. So, you know, it was kind of like one of those things and you just mentioned it, building that adaptation. And it can be the same for spearing, you know, because you're, you're, you're in, in Australia, you can get to those depths of residual volume where your lungs compress to the point they won't compress anymore that's somewhere around that 25 30 meter mark mm. um and if you don't know i mean people people lung squeeze spearing at, that, at those things yeah you know 100%. um and that's potentially life-threatening wrestling and stuff out of holes is a that's common that's the biggest thing you know so so i suppose those guys um gave me an education on you need to separate yourself from ego and this is a big thing in the spearing world as well that i see is and, and I, I, I definitely had it. Like when I did my first freediving course, I looked at my spearfishing practices and I went, I'm lucky to be alive. <laughs> the shit that I did, right? Um, and, and a lot of it was from ego, right? Because, you know, the, the two other, other guys are doing it. I'm well, the two other it. guys have put coral trout in the tin and I got a, I've got a Sergio, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then I see a coral trout and I don't listen to my body and what's going on and, and where I'm at in my breath hold. I'm just so fixated on I need to get that coral trout to be a hero and yeah. take a photo and put it on Instagram because they've got it as well. Um, and the, th the same thing is in freedom. I mean, the, the ego is, is well, what, what will bring you unstuck mm. where you go, I need to be deeper. I need to be at this level for my self-worth. I need to be this to put it on Instagram to show everyone that I'm a weapon spiro, whatever it is. The ego is what gets or what makes things go wrong in the ocean. It's that, yeah. Killfish with precision and power, sending shafts from a stable platform with Kill Shots Spear Guns. Made in the Florida Keys by Ed Martin, you're buying American-made, dependable spear guns. Get $30 off any Kill Shots Spear Gun at killshotspearguns.com. Yes and amen, Uber. That's $30 off 
American-made performance spear guns at killshotspearguns.com. It says if they're in the shop or on the phone, they can cash in by saying, crikey, mate, or the Noob Spiro podcast sent me. Check them out at killshotspearguns.com, based in the Florida Keys. Did you know when coming up from a spearfishing dive, it's possible that you would feel 100% fine right until the moment you blacked out? Did you know being dehydrated or hungover increases your risk of having a blackout? Did you know I have never seen a person hit the surface and yell, Tad, help, I'm about to black out, come save me. No, they typically hit the surface, take a couple breaths, and then quietly sink into the abyss. Whether they live or die is 100% dependent on if you are close enough to grab them and take care of the situation. Did you know it's very easy to have a loss of motor control or a minor blackout and not even know that you had one? Did you know that if you have a loss of motor control or blackout and you continue diving that day, you are way more likely to have a much worse blackout? Did you know breathing across the eyes of a blackout diver can help initiate a breathing response? That was 60 seconds with me. What else don't you know? My name is Ted Hardy, the founder of Immersion Freediving, and I want to do more to stop the needless fatalities from shallow water blackout than any other person on the planet. And that's why I created freedivingsafety.com. Lucky for you, I made it very easy to get up to speed. You can learn how to reduce your risk of having a blackout, how to save your buddy's life, how to tell if you're wearing too much weight, and avoid breathing techniques that drastically increase your risk of having a blackout, and it's all for free. Go to freedivingsafety.com and sign up for my free safety course. Dive safe out there. It's not even that hard, especially when you learn for free at freedivingsafety.com. Have you read that Ryan Halliday book? The ego is the enemy, I think it is, or? I don't think I've read um, it, but I've heard of it, yeah. It's like old school um, philosophy, and but made sort of more actionable for Mm. our time and age. I think, um, yeah, ego permeates so much of our lives, and... um, you know, like our bosses try and use it to manipulate us into greater performance at work and it's weaponized in a lot of society, you know. Ma- males are, you know, we're notorious. We we kind of do it already. We don't really need any encouragement or help with it. But then society em- encourages that and builds it. I love to see it pulled out of spearfishing. I, you know, one of our founding core values is is no ego, you know. Mm. And uh, we used to do it turbo and I back in the day by taking the piss out of each other all the time about being mm. shit divers. Mm. And uh, and it's fun, you know. And I still like to do that. And I love having that interaction and that banter because I I don't think that, that performance should be, you know, how you measure yourself as a Spiro. Like, um, mm. But there, there's a brand of Spiro that, that say like, you know, I only like to shoot the this fish at uh, fifty plus meters, and uh, if you don't shoot the fish past fifty meters, you are not even doing a spear fishing. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, man, are you just like kill- you, you? You're kidding me! Like that doesn't even sound fun. Mate, we're we're now we're now drinking red wine and got the cheeses out. Did you, <laughs> mate? That was that was brilliant. That was a good mate. accent. <laughs> <was> a good <laughs> accent. <laughs> you just took me to Paris. Eh? Um, I don't know why I made them French because <laughs> honestly, the last bunch of French dudes I missed, uh, I went diving with in uh, WA. Those guys have zero ego, and same with the guys. I've got some mates up here on the sunny coast, and they don't have any ego either. So mm. sorry for picking on some French people. There. Oh, mate, I pick on the French as well um, <laughs> all the time in my courses. I love Love them, um, yeah. and they're pioneers of free diving in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, yeah, um, which is probably why. I yeah, pulled but, out but I, I still pick on them. I, okay. I, I do love them, okay. but um, it, like the ego is a funny thing. So, um, ego can also be good, right? Um, in in the sense that, like for example, the reason you asked a lot of these questions on this podcast about you coaching other people and free diving courses and what you should, is because you take pride in your performance, which is also a part of um, the egoic mind, right? Because People that have zero care for their ego, they'll rock up to the course and they'll do the bare minimum. And people leave those courses going, eh, that wasn't a great course. Because the person just goes, like, I'm just going to tick the boxes because I don't care whether they think this is a good course or not. I'm going to take their money and see you later. So it's not always a bad thing. Um, but in terms of, I think, with uh, performance and spearfishing and freediving in particular, because the stakes are a lot higher, you know, if you have, if your ego is too high and you're running a hundred meter sprint, well, who cares, right? You'll get to the finishing line. Yeah. You might not win, and it might dent your ego, but you'll you'll live. If you use ego in an underwater in the underwater realm, um, potentially you may not live, uh, yeah. and that's and that's I suppose the the main 
thing that I really loved about the the diving experience, but also the free diving experience, was that there's no other sport that I can think of where you can't be pumped up. Yeah, you can't be in that what they call in the sporting world that state of arousal, like where you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you're getting yourself pumped up and. You know, it was this sport that I'd never, I'd never felt before. Where I was like, man, I have to do the complete opposite here. Yeah, I like it too, man. Yeah, and and that's the that's the cool challenge. But then also, you know, the thing with this world, and you know, there'd be a lot of your listeners that are like, oh, this Adam bloke, you know, he's bloody from the you know yoga meditation world, like thinks he's floating around, <laughs> got butterflies got flying a, around his head. He's like, got a ponytail for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ponytail disappears after the course. It just, it just grows through the course. Um, but the thing I like about um, free diving and spear fishing is that you are you are meditating, right? You're just mm. moving while you're doing it. Yeah. And but the the results are measurable. So, like you know, some people say, "Oh, teach me how to meditate," and and they they try, let's say, over the uh, course of a couple of weeks, but they're waiting for something to happen. Mm. Am I going to get some kind of spiritual experience? <laughs> you know, is is the Buddha going to flash up into my brain and then yeah. I'm all all of a sudden going to be a buffalo soldier? And like that's not that's not how it works. But the thing that that free diving and spear fishing is is for particularly Western world is it's measurable, right? So you start to use these meditation techniques that have been used for thousands of years in the yogi world, and but then you go from ten to twelve meters, and you go, oh shit, okay. So I got my body and mind in sync on the surface and I felt super calm with this breathe up. And then that gave me an extra two. So that's measurable, right? And then all of a sudden you, 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 get, you sink deeper and deeper in it and then you're like, wow, I went back out to that same location and I, I was just able to sink more into that peaceful zone. Mm. Then I did 20 meters. So as opposed to meditation where you're sitting there and you're like, I'm yeah. terrible at this. You know, it's this measurable gain where you're like, Okay, I spent three minutes at the surface breathing up and I could feel my body sink deeper than I've ever sunk before. And that's meditation, right? That's the, mm. Make no bones about it. But it's measurable. And it's the yeah. same as spear fishing. Like, oh, Jesus, last week I wasn't as relaxed. I tried some of these techniques I learned in a freediving course or in a yoga session or with one of my mates who spears who just puts a bit more time into his breather. Mm. Um, and all of a sudden, I was comfortable in 15 meters spearing as opposed to 10. Mm. So I tell you about my mate who he's a balls to the wall guy, right? So yeah. he, you know, he's going to become an archery hunter. He goes out and he spends five grand. He buys the stuff, and then he's like, he just finds a dude that's like really good at it, and then boom, he's out there. I'm an archer, you know. And he he doesn't pretend like he's going to be good or anything, but he just he throws us all into it. Like he's a hundred percent balls to the wall. Um, with spearing, he tried the same thing. And I said, bro, please do not do not go balls to the wall. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to go down to the swimming pool, you and me. I'm going to show you some stuff. And I'm going to give you all the techniques that you use. As soon as you get out there in the ocean, you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff dialed already and you're just going to feel a lot less anxious because there's shit to be anxious about out there. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. And then he kind of hummed and hard. And I was like, bro, um, this Saturday uh, I've made some time. Let's go down the pool. Oh, no, nah, you know, like, yeah, we got some stuff on. And you know, Anyway, a couple of these things went past. A week later he bought a boat. And then the next thing he invites me out on this trip and with these two other guys who are fairly experienced spearos and we're going straight out there spearfishing. And right at the start of the day, though, I G'd him up. I met these guys and we – convinced him me and this other fellow while the other guy was filming that we did like a uh, um a yoga session before we went out so i had him in down dog position and stuff and we were like got to face the sun and we're <laughs> filming this thing pissing ourselves later but we got out there and he was he jumped in the water he was furiously seasick you know we were drifting some you know out morton it's, yeah, it's yeah. tough spearing like we we're in 10 12 meters at least and drifting through, it was not comfortable diving. There's like a meter and a half swell, 15 knot winds. And and he had a miserable time, you know. He's ended up selling his boat, selling his gear and not doing it, you know. And I'm just like, I love people that are balls to the wall. People that just chuck all in and go hard. But sometimes it's just like you just need that little bit of caution and enjoy it. But anyway, my point is your the yoga that we taught him came in really handy. No, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's now a balls to the wall yoga yeah. instructor. <laughs> Uh, Some of the stuff that you learn when you do, like I did um, a Headspace challenge. I used to listen to this podcast, the Tim Ferriss podcast. Have you heard of it? Yes, yeah. And, uh, you know, someone calls it like um, performance porn or something. I can't remember <laughs> what it was. But, you know, he's hardcore in his self-improvement and stuff. And he he went hard on telling us about that Headspace. They had the zero to ten day challenge once. And I did it. And I did it for a year pretty much. And, I learned all about checking in with the body and some of the stuff we do in our um, breathing workshop and I'd never done that before. I'd never actually gone, oh, wow, this, I've got them holding mad tension in that part of my body. And then like, oh, just tuning into one sound, like, oh, shit, like I didn't hear that before until I started isolating all the sounds. And then, and then you start realizing like your deeper emotional state and I'm just like, holy shit, I can't believe I'm walking around like this and I'm not even aware of it. No wonder I'm hostile and treating people like shit. Um, so there, there's heaps of that stuff that we, you know, like, yeah, spearfishing's a, seen as like this more male-oriented sport. I don't actually think it is. And now we're just starting. I think most of the spearos are becoming more open to this stuff and we're more conscious of that deeper experience that we're having underneath the fish getting thrown in the esky. Well. I mean, um, even, even like podcasts like this uh, are starting to spread the word. There's more like spearing is getting so popular and we, we do have a responsibility. But, you know, like I am seeing more and more come because mm. they're going, hey, look, you know, we've had a mate pass or I heard something happened up there or whatever, whatever's going on. So, you know, it, they are – it is definitely opening up a bit more now. I think – with the popularity of it. And this is the thing, you know, that the part of the reason why it does hold more risk is because it's unregulated, right? Mm. The twelve year old kid can go down to Super Amart, not Super Amart, Amart All Sports, grab a mass snorkel gun and go. Right. Yeah. And without knowing the physiology, the psychology, the safety part of things. So and it's getting so much more popular, which is fantastic because it's great for humans. Yeah. Um but then I suppose people, you know, in our position and people that have gone through the ranks have a bit of a responsibility to, you know, also help. And the spearfishing clubs are doing really well now. That's one thing yeah. I've noticed is, you know, my local one here, the Sunny Coast, they are, they invited me oh, in to do awesome. a chat. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, they they know they've got a responsibility now and they don't want they don't want their mates to to get in a position where they're potentially in trouble. So yeah. it's definitely changing. It's a great thing. Um, but, yeah, getting back to what you were saying, I mean, I the first person that told me that I was stressed was a dentist. <laughs> and I remember thinking at the time, mate, stay in your lane. Like, <laughs> fix my teeth. You're not my, you're not my <laughs> mental strength coach, yeah, bitch. Like, <laughs> mate, you're not a psychologist, but I was yeah. literally wearing my back teeth down because when I got stressed, I clenched. Oh, wow. Um, whether it was through everyday life or in my sleep and um you know that's what this underwater world has taught me it's been my greatest teacher yeah. because you know the body mind connection I, I mean the last competition i did was at the bahamas in the in the dean's blue hole and um they had this team of american doctors there mm. and they were measuring you know our vital signs and oh, all this sick. stuff before we went in yeah and then we would do our dive and then we'd come out and they're like adam adam quickly up here and you know i remember saying to the the head doctor at the time i was like what are you trying to what are you trying to like achieve here? What, what's the end goal? He said, oh, we, we know about, you know, the parasympathetic nervous system and how when it's triggered we do this. And, but we want to know how you free divers are able to access that so much quicker than the average human. Mm, mm. And, you know, I, I just smiled and I said, well, you're not going to find that with instruments, mate. <laughs> and he said, what do you mean? I said, oh, it's something called the body-mind connection. And when you work on it, it gets stronger. And I said, so when we're out there, the first thing we do is we make sure the body's kind of relaxed and that sends signals to the mind to say down here we're relaxed so it's okay for you to relax but it's a two-way feedback loop yeah, right so yeah, your yeah. mind's the same so you've got to be able to not clear your mind but in some cases distract it or just calm it and then the mind will send messages to the body again because when the mind goes off the body will just tighten and vice versa mm. so you know he, he went back to his little hotel room in the bahamas and he and he comes back the next day and he goes adam adam i was like hey mate he's like so turns out, like the body mind connection is a thing, and I was like, well, "That's a te- that's a deep South American accent, isn't it?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, yeah, I know." He was a Texan, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, "I know," and he's like, 
shit, we just spent like 60 grand fine all these doctors out. I was like, well, just give me 30 and send them home. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's something that the, the, the great thing about today is we're, we're, we're actually really starting to tap into this. And it's mm. actually a, an exciting time because I reckon too. If, you, if you take it on board and you, and you look into it and you start to implement just small things in your life, you live such a happier, healthier life. Yeah. Um, we, we're just in, in Australia, that's all we can talk about because we live here, but Mate, we just we, – we live this existence that's just go, 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 never stop. And that's why people love spearing and freedom because it's the two hours, four hours in their week where they just get to just completely switch off, mm. you know, and forget about the one million things that they have to do, which, by the way, they've built for themselves. Pussy, so I've only got one million <laughs> things to do. I've got frigging three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, no, but, I'm you know that's it's it, it is an exciting time because we're starting to push away from, you know, just the the pharmaceutical world and the we just need to be busy and we're starting yeah. to actually kind of look into ancient ancient wisdom, mate. Like it's it's not a new thing. Mm. It's been around for thousands of years. Mm. We're just only in Western world and in Australia we're starting to tap back into that. Yeah, no, it is cool. I love it too. Great news, guys. Adam Stern has made his freedivingfamily.com courses available at a discount for the new Spiro community. If you get on freedivingfamily.com, use the code Spiro, you'll get 20% off any course. There's a bunch of sick courses on there. There's an equalizing uh, stage one. There's an equalizing advanced techniques um, video there. They're two of my absolute favorites. If you have any problems with equalizing, go to freedivingfamily.com. Get Adam's course and use the code SPIRO to get 20% off any course. Check it out at freedivingfamily.com. In the world of freedive spearfishing, there's no magic breathing technique that's all of a sudden going to get you down and shoot massive fish at depth and holding big bottom times. But there is a way to do it safer and smarter, take down more fuel to maximize the time that you have there. Learn at noobspiro.com forward slash TED with Ted Hardy from Immersion Freediving. If you take down more fuel, you can stay for longer. Learn how to do it free at noobspiro.com forward slash Ted. Yeah, these these kind of activities, they're a little bit primitive like to a lot of people. and then, But they just help us form real connections with like the people around us, with the environment, with ourselves. You know, yeah, technology is awesome, but cheap as, you know, some of the stuff we do these days and we're that specialized in our jobs and stuff. A lot of us just have very general poor skill sets and, you know, like it's it's funny. Like in spearfishing, like, you know, like I'm notoriously shit at rigging, and you know, like just <laughs> so bad. And then someone's like, oh, it's just a, a bowline. And I'm like, oh, yeah. What's a bowline again? You know, like and just basic man skills and I'm just like, oh, okay, well, cool. I'm inadequate in that area too. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I, I am, mate, you and I are two peas in a pod because I'm the same. I was that bad at it that. When I started spearing, the guys had this little cray gun that they called Bluey. Yeah. And I used to just take this cray gun because it was so easy to load. It was one rubber. Yeah. It was so easy to load. And it didn't even have um, – I never even had like a float with rope attached to it. I'd just go down with this little blue gun. <laughs> and the first fish I ever shot, and you'll know this area, we kicked straight off Shelly Beach at Caloundra. Yeah. And so the first fish I ever shot, we kicked out for about a K – and my mate, he's, you know, he's got crayfish, he's got slaty brim, he's got all this other stuff. And anyway, and I got nothing and we're kicking back and he dives down and he shoots this estuary cod, which was the biggest fish I'd ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Right? I was like, holy crap. And he, I, said, I said, has he got a mate down there? And he goes, well, actually, there was two of them, but he's probably gone. So this is my first ever experience with Spearing, right? And so I go down and... um and his mate's there, just sitting on the sand. Oh, beautiful. Another big one. And I didn't even know what would happen after you shoot one. <laughs> so I just go down and it wasn't even sport. He just sat there. He was like, bloop, 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 yeah. just looking at me. And I shot him fair in the face and he just rolled over. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So I, st- I stoned it. Oh, that's And I awesome. kicked to the surface and he's still, you know, he's got his knife out and he's bleeding out. Notoriously and- difficult to, to icky. And yep. – <laughs> And I kicked to the surface. I'm like, I got him. And he's he's like, what? He puts his face in the water and he's like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, and we got back to shore and he goes, 
you know if you didn't stone that thing, it would have took it would have taken off and you'd have been in all sorts. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but here I was thinking, that's just spearfishing. Yeah, you know, I've, yeah. got, I've got this made. You know that you just shoot them and they roll over. <laughs> <laughs> mate, what a that's a that's a good experience. Yeah, Adam, I've had a blast, mate. We're uh, we, we're going to do this again, I think, when we run a collab course. Um, and it's coming. It'll be on the calendar, hopefully this year. And we'll record another one of these suckers, I think, and we'll talk more about some of the. The cool stuff we've chatted about today. Where can people come and find you? You're at uh, the Pressure Project everywhere. Oh, mate, yeah, all the W's. Dot the Pressure Project. Dot com. Dot au. That's yep. the website. On Insta, just at Pressure Project. But um, yeah, I'd love to uh, love to work with you. I think um, if you're interested, maybe I think the people might speak. Maybe they want both of us. Maybe they want the yeah. yin and the yang, mate. Oh, we can have hey? a ponytail oh. and a receding bald man. <laughs> <laughs> Two big units. We'll call it the big unit hey? free dive oh, retreat mate. or something. I'm in. I'm in. Um, nah, awesome, brother. Awesome. I forgot what I was going to say. That's that's unlike me. That's all right. It's unlikely. So thepressureproject.com.au and at Pressure Project on Instagram, which reminds me, um, there's that majestic video you have on there. You and me on the HMAS. Oh, you follow mate, me down. That, that is – I've never – Guys, go on to my Instagram. Uh, I don't know how long ago it was, but you'll see it's on the HMAS Brisbane wreck. I I've, I don't think I've ever lolled, laughed out loud underwater. Uh, you ju- just just do yourself a favour. Go and see the big man Shrek <laughs> at Noob Spiro, um, elegantly going down for a photo on the HMAS, and just have a look at what happens. Um, you'll see the bubbles spray out of my mouth because I'm laughing my head off. Um, but he goes to do his best sure person impersonation on the big cannon, like if I could turn, and it, it just goes horribly wrong for the big guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, get amongst it. Oh, good guys! Thanks for listening, and uh, thanks Adam again for coming on, brother. My pleasure. Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed Adam today, and uh, some of the the, the candid conversation that. We were having, as I said earlier in the show, like I really consider him my friend and mentor. If you are interested in doing a freediving course, I would incredibly, incredibly encourage you to check it out, The Pressure Project, and uh, just search him up and uh, you'll hear a bit more about his personal story if you go and check him out. Um, Well worth doing and uh, just carries great energy through a course. He he always inspires me and I'm always learning things from him. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Hey, if you love the show, Consider becoming a patron legend. There are 47 absolute champions um, helping to put fuel in the Noob Spirit outboard and keep this sucker going. This podcast has always been free and always will be free, um, but it's in large part to the incredible patrons that help put fuel in the outboard every episode. And they do, there's three different levels you can support the show at. I'd appreciate it. Check it out. It's at patreon.com forward slash noobspiro. Again, thanks to the frothing legends that have, uh, I'm killing frothing today, sorry about this guys, that have taken 99 Spiro recipes into their local retailers and showed them the book. Um, It's already helped me make some connections and get the books into more Spiro's hands. Um, Some of you guys really get the vision of the book, helping us all to become better stewards of the ocean and to do more with uh, our fish and um, so again thank you and uh, hey next week I've got a Norwegian spearfishing podcast host his name is Oystein Sundland and uh, I've, I've probably butchered it again but um, it's a cracking interview we talk about heaps of different local species in Norway it's an incredible spearfishing destination picturesque above and below the water come back next week Oystein joins me all good over and out Today's episode was an absolute banger, and so is our major sponsor, Adreno. Visit them at adreno.com.au. They have a huge range of equipment. You can find it at adreno.com.au. Use the code NoobSpear at checkout. When you shop online, you can save $20 on every purchase over $200. You can even use that code in-store at some of their huge mega stores Australia-wide. Price beat guarantee on any Australian spearfishing equipment price. Again, visit them at adreno.com.au. Use the code NoobSpear. The Noob Spiro Podcast is incredibly proud 
to be partnering with Neptonics.com. It's solid gear that works, equipment you can rely on. It's the very best in spearing gear from around the planet. Neptonics is also the one-stop shop for all your spearfishing gear, particularly in the US. They've got free shipping on all orders over $99 in the US. Furthermore, you can use the code NOOB10 to save 10% off on your entire shopping basket at Neptonics.com. Use the code NOOBSPIRO at Neptonics.com. Guys, today's show is proudly brought to you in partnership with HowToFreeDive.com. Our man Pete Ryder over there in the UK has put together some fantastic video training. You can join along. There's two courses to choose from. There is the five-minute freediver that would suit you if you're a little bit more advanced. And I've also investigated the 10-meter freediver course. Head on over to HowToFreeDive.com. Try out the free taster test and uh, taste the course. And if you like it, pump in the code NoobSparrow to save 20%. That's uh, HowToFreeDive.com. Thanks for joining us today.